We all know as truck drivers that these days, truck drivers aren't paid nearly what they're worth, nearly what they should be making. The pay hasn't kept up with the cost of living, and we all know that. It's, it's been bad for 20 years. How do we do something about this? That's the question. And I get all sorts of guys sending me letters saying, we should unionize. That's the answer. We'll, we'll unionize and get better pay. Maybe we should unionize. Believe it or not, I was a Teamster for a little while back in 1982 or 83. Did a short stint as a, as a Teamster driver. It was part of what helped me decide to become a, an independent. I, I tried the union thing. It didn't work out very well for me. I hired on to a shop that were, that were 15 drivers, I believe. The first thing I learned was being junior man, I got the worst truck, I got the worst trailer, and I got the worst runs. The, the senior guys would come in and turn and burn and go back out again and I'd get the scraps and the leftovers and then we got slow. And for a couple months there I got, I got virtually nothing. I sat at home for a couple of months while the senior guys, because they had seniority, they just kept taking all the loads. And just at the point when I was thinking about packing it in, winter hit. And winter hit really hard. There was a lot of snow. There was a lot of ice and bitter cold. It was a bad, hard winter. And all of a sudden, even though the freight volume hadn't increased, all of a sudden, I got really busy. And it was because the senior guys didn't want to drive in the snow. They didn't like to drive in the snow. They were all city boys. So all of a sudden, I was swamped. And when it was snowing so hard, you couldn't see across the street, my phone would ring off the hook. And you know, I never forgot that about, about that situation, about unions, because you know, they all said they were my brothers, but they were prepared to watch me starve to death in slow times. And also, I, I grew up in the year of Jimmy Hoffa, and Jimmy Hoffa was, was famous, you know. He started a good thing. It was, it was a great concept, and we all thought, oh, that's, that's going to be, that's gonna be good for us. And then Hoffa got involved with the unions, and what was happening was he was taking pension fund money and either loaning it or giving it to the mob to build these casinos in Vegas and stuff. And if, if Robert Kennedy hadn't stepped in at the time, it might have wiped out that pension fund completely. And all these guys that had worked all their lives and paid into this pension fund might have retired and then found out they had no pension at all. Unions at the time were associated with, with violence, picket lines, fighting, and I didn't want to be any part of that. Now, on the other hand, after Hoffa was gone and the government started regulating uh, the Teamsters and you know you don't expect much when it comes to government regulation but they actually did a really good job of cleaning up the Teamsters and uh, I knew lots of Teamsters that made a good living, were paid well, had a pension fund, a retirement fund, so it worked out well for a whole lot of guys. Honestly, if, if you could run a good, clean, honest union We'd be a power force to be reckoned with. Think of the, think of the numbers of drivers there are. If we all got together, man, we'd have the grocery chains shaking in their boots, and I'd, I'd like to see that. But, you know, we as drivers, the nature of the beast is we're kind of an independent sort by nature. We like to work by ourselves. We like to drive a lot. And when we're done working, we'd like to go home for a little R&R. &R. So who's got the time? It's the time that's the problem, or one of the problems, in this setting up our own union. It's, it's a hugely time-consuming thing, I would imagine. And I can't believe the managerial skills and would be involved in setting up one. Uh, should we join an existing union, like the Teamsters? Or that whole thing left a, a bad taste in my mouth because I, I saw the, the Teamster managers and union reps getting rich from the whole deal but I never really saw the money trickle down to the drivers and that's what that's what this should be about it should be about making the drivers wealthier and giving them a better life not not making the union wealthier that's just defeating the purpose of the whole thing I'm a two minds on that as much as we need help I'm not sure how we should go about it I don't know you know if we should try to form our own union or join an existing union now bear something else in mind too, and, and what happened with me was I ended up getting off the road and going to work for a small carrier, private guy, running locally and getting paid by the hour. So now I'm working for this honest guy, he values his people, he pays us well, 
he treats us fairly and I have really no need for a union anymore. So if, if everybody did that, just got off the highway altogether, well then things would change too. If you, you know, if you decided to run locally and a lot of guys did that, it would change the landscaping of over the road trucking. On the one hand, I think that over the road trucking could certainly use a union. And on the other hand, I, I don't know whether it would ever work or not. Let me tell you a few advantages of being a union driver. Generally the pay is better and as a union driver you get paid for everything and you get properly paid for it. You get paid for your pre-check, circle check, your post circle check, you get paid for all your waiting time, you don't get screwed on your mileage on this PC miler system and if you do you put in a grievance and they fix it because they've got to because that's part of the contract. So you don't get beat on your miles and your miles are how you're paid. You don't get beat on your hours and that makes all the difference in the world because there's a ton of hours in trucking as you guys know. You make better money because you're getting paid for everything you do and that's the biggest advantage of a union shop. There's a pension fund at the end of the day if you can stick it out long enough and your job description is more defined. There are things you're expected to do and things you do not have to do at all. It's, it's a pretty black and white system. It's a pretty clear line in the sand as to what your job description is and what you don't have to do. And that's, that's one of the big advantages of a union job. I'll tell you a, a little interesting story of my short time in the union. I was stationed, our little union company was based up, up north here where I live and there was no, no mechanic, no shop. We had an on-call mechanic but sometimes you could get hold of the guy and sometimes you couldn't. So I did uh, my circle check one morning and the, the brakes were out of adjustment. They weren't badly out of adjustment but they were out. I was pulling, pulling A-trains so having your brakes set up properly with a set of A-trains is important but I was going down to the city empty and I complained to uh, my supervisor. He said, well, just be careful. Go down there and go to the shop in Toronto and have the brakes set up down there. I wasn't happy, but I was new there. And I said, okay. And I went down there and got down to their shop down in Toronto. Went in and checked in, told them what I needed. Three hours later, I was still sitting there waiting for a mechanic to get around to looking at my brakes. And I got fed up with it. So I went out, crawled underneath the trailers set up my own brakes and I was very capable of doing that. I had no problem doing that. I was well used to doing doing that, setting up my own brakes. Set up my own brakes, went loaded, headed headed home back up north. Well, a union shop steward down there put a grievance in on me for setting up my own brakes because I was taking his job and I got suspended for a week. So there, <laughs> there was my thanks for for increasing productivity, saving time, saving the money and, and loading and getting getting going, getting out of there. And I thought, well that's you know, and that's kind of a, a typical union story, you know, and it's not always got a practical twist to it. And that was one of the problems I always had with unions anyway. I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. What are your union experiences? Are you are you for this? Are you against this? Tell me what's happened to you. Are unions the way to go? Or are they not? Let me know. I, I want to know your opinions on this stuff and we'll, we'll talk about it more again. Give me your feedback. Stay safe, enjoy the drive, and I'll see you on the backhaul.